Hey guys, my name is Octoman and this video is about data persistence um, between scenes and storing Boolean. Um, and also some fixes I ran over uh, when I was building this one. And yeah, let's get started with a Boolean at first. So how to store a Boolean, as you have seen in my last video, how to store an integer. This is going to be the same stuff as doing it with um, whatever. Um, I changed the game manager a bit because I had some trouble with some buttons. I'm going to tell you this one afterwards. Um, my money script, as you have seen before, is still the same. And in that money script, I'm going to, yeah, add a, a boolean. And this boolean is just a boolean. It doesn't really matter if it's true or false or whatever. You can do anything inside of that as I've uh, said in the last video. So this is going to be a public boolean, which is called just a bool. And this is, um, I'm going to set this one to true or false. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to set this one to false. If I save this in the inspector over there, there will be the boolean, which is called just a bool. There we go. And I can change this one, but it wouldn't be stored if I go to, or if I load and save my stuff. So let's get back to my save load script, which you, I was writing in the last video. So go back and watch this before I just need to go over all the, uh, uh, yeah, over to the stuff over here. Okay. So in the class save manager, I just add another boolean, which is, has nothing to do basically with that boolean. So, um, I call this one the bool. You can call this one again as whatever you like. And the bool will be just a bool or you can, yeah, call it whatever you like. And this is uh, what I go to uh, set the bool to, whichever state is in there, and I'm going to store it in that. So in my save function, I go over and say saver dot the bool. Uh, what? Saver dot the bool, and I set this bool to the money script bool. So money script dot money as dot just a bool which is a boolean i was creating and i set this one to that one when i store it and so this way i store it in my binary file all your other game objects and stuff and vector 3 information and so on you are always storing into that safer file and you need to make sure that everything is inside the safe manager um, class. So, and the same back, if I load this one, I want to make sure that I read this one f um, from the right um, and set this one to the right. So, um, in the money script, I have money s and in there I have just a bool. Mm, where it is? There it is in the list. And I'm going to set this one to the saver.bool or saver dot bool. So I'm going to um, take everything outside um, while I'm loading this one. I take that safe manager, yeah, class boolean and set this one back to whatever it has been initial. So going to save this one. Oh, also, if you haven't read the description of the last video in here, you can see I have a small delete function. So um, if you want to delete your saved data file whenever you like to, and if you have more of them or whatever, you can just add these two lines of code or three lines. Um, yeah, just to make sure to um, first check if the file exists, which we are right, uh, w which we have written here. The save file dot octo uh, again. The explanation is in the other video, and check if it is on the persistent data pass. If this one is existing, then go and delete this one by file dot delete application dot persistent data pass, and then the file name. And this makes sure that you can delete this one on uh, yeah from anywhere yeah from any uh, yeah from every button or whatever you are pressing or whatever the player is going to hit or whatever, then you can delete the file which is existing. And don't forget, it has to be public so you can access this from outside of the script. So again, I'm saving this one. And now you can save the boolean inside. You can also, as I have yeah, told you in the last video, you can add 
integer boolean strings vector two three four quaternion matrix four by four color rect layer uh, layer mask and so on just watch the other video i was telling that one okay the next one i want to go over is um i'm going want to make sure that my um money holder is um which which is a uh, uh, yeah, which is a new um, empty game object, and I added the money script from this or for this uh, onto this. And inside, uh, let's just first check the what the booling is doing. Um, again, I get the coins. They are show you. You can see them here, or you can see them here in the inspector. I can set the boolean to true, and now I'm going to save the file. Now, if I load, or actually I say I, I, I change something here, I do delete or, or disable the boolean and set this one to 100 maybe, and it's counting up. And now I go and load this one, I get back to the initial state, and the boolean again is active. Um, let me just deactivate this one and load again. And there we go, it's back to true. So this is what we, uh, how you can store um, a boolean, an integer, and so on, uh, float variables, string variables, and all the other stuff I was telling you in the other, uh, in the last video. Okay, so let's go forward with data persistence. Data persistence means I want to make sure that I can take all the data which currently is in my money script over here, and I want to take all that information to another scene. I added a small load scene one button over here. And on this button, uh, when I press this one, I'm going to call a small script, which is called load level. You can call it again, however you like. And inside of that, this is just a small, um, yeah, nothing special. It's just a small, um, yeah, public. So I can call this one from a button. I have a small integer here, which I call save to load, uh, scene to load. So you can skip or go to through every scene you need actually and take the number. And once you click the button, you just call this small method or function, um, which is the level loader. And in here you just take the integer, which you are setting inside of the inspector or set it wherever you like and load the level. That's pretty much it's what the load level thing is doing. And on button click, you just add the button itself, where, because the script is on that, take the component, po component load level, um, inside of that button, and then just, um, yeah, set the scene to load to whatever you like, to load scene 100,000, I don't know, whatever. You also need to prepare your scene. So if you go into the build settings, you can see I have two scenes in here. Um, if you are in a new scene and you have, haven't, um, yeah, done this one and added this one into that scenes in build, then you need to have to, yeah, add this one to the current setup or build. So my spawning stuff, unit.unity .unit scene, this is my, yeah, where I'm currently in, and the data persistence scene is what I am currently in. So, um, this integer number uh, at the, uh, in this row will just go and load the scene number one and will push me through the uh, uh, to the data persistence scene. Okay, this is just a scene name. You can call your scenes again as however you like and however you want or need. And I'm going to show you my other scene right now, which is, yes, I want to save this, which is just clean. There is nothing inside. Uh, why is it so dark? I'm going to go over to that later on. Um, basically, it has some, something to do with light, of course. Um, however, this data persistent scene doesn't have anything except the button to get back. I'm going to show you this one. Just again, the load level script and this one will load the scene number zero when I press this one. And But I was also adding the money holder. So it is needed that you add the money holder as a prefab to that. So you have the possibility to do anything inside of that. Um, coin, coin text will be clear. Uh, I'm going to show you that's why um, later on. And in here, normally there's just a number of zero because I have nothing, no coins. 
and the boolean we just leave all that stuff alone in here just make sure that the money holder is in the data persistence scene or the next scene where you need data persistence in okay back to my um save this spawning um in my spawning scene so in here again i load all the stuff around but um when i want to load my or uh, when to want to go to the next scene um the data which is inside of the money holder will not be stored and um will not take into the next scene i'm going to show you this one pretty quick okay now i have here some coins inside eight and now i load the next scene and i go to the money holder and but still i have no coins in my money holder because i didn't send all that data inside of that yeah or i actually i didn't make this one persistent so i can't use that data inside of here and don't yeah and can't go back to that scene and do the stuff or go forward with that stuff so that's why i did that video and yeah let's get started with the data persistence basically um i just add something into um the awake function of my money script because this one is the static um the static money script stuff and inside here i just have all my coins i have the boolean variables and all the other stuff in here so i go forward and just need to check first something um which and um, which yeah i i need to make sure that this game object where this script is on is in the right scene so at first i need to check if um money s which is uh the component um yeah or the, the, the yeah this this um yeah, the script part actually. Um, if this money as is equal to null, so you take this one and uh, this script and check if this one is in the scene, in the current scene, and you check this one once the game start or actually the room starts or whatever. Okay, so if this is not null, uh, if this is null. Then I want to make sure that this script, of course, it, um, is the only one. Um, but I want to make sure that I can, uh, or will hold, at first, will hold um, the data inside of that game, in, uh, in that, yeah, in that game object. So, there's a small function which is called don't destroy on load. And I'm going to target the game um, object I am in currently. So don't destroy this um, game object when you are going, uh, when this thing is awake and when money as equals null and when it's not there. Else, if I want to make sure that there is, there, that there are not more than uh, one in that scene. So I want to make sure if money as not equals null. Ah, uh, no, not equals this. Uh, whoops, this is wrong. Give me a second. This needs to be here. If money.s is not this um, this script, this uh, game object actually, or this uh, script part, then go and destroy the game object. There we go. So this is will be the only, um, or actually the right, um, or make sure that the, the um, yeah that the right game object is in the scene. Okay, so at first I'm going to uh, comment this one out. This is to make a game object persistent. Then we say okay, make money as this script, and if it's not, then destroy the game object. Okay, saving this one and yeah, let's check this one at first out. So I have some coins in here, going to wait a second more with four. And now I load the scene and in here you can see now the four coins I was sending from the other 
um, uh, from the other scene into that scene are persistent. And now I can set just a bool and send this version back again and it will stay for and the just a bool will be true. As you can see, now I'm in the other scene again. That null reference I'm going to go over in a second. But just the bool is active and the coins are counting up from wherever they were. But as you can see, um, the null reference exception is only because the text element over here is deleted. As you can see, the text element itself is not persistent. So what I want to do is, um, since I need the text um, over here, you can use your health bar stuff and so on, but you may notice that those thingies which are inside a persistent or, s or um, actually all canvas UI and all canvas buttons are not persistent if they are on the same game object or if they have a um, if they have a connection to a persistent game object this will delete everything inside of that this won't happen if you have it in a separate um, or in an extra um, game in a, a uh, yeah, game object actually. So my game manager just holds my save and load script currently, not my uh, money script because um, I avoid trouble with that. And this game manager object can do all the loading and saving stuff without being uh, persistent from the money holder. So all your buttons need to go to an, a separate um, game object and call all that stuff from that buttons but not inside a static one. Okay, so let's fix a small text string uh, thing here. And um, since I cannot find or can't get back the text co uh, or coin text again, so I need to find this one or can use a tag, whatever you like, it doesn't really matter. I think uh, a lot of people say finding game objects take longer than using it as a tag system. Uh, this is maybe more interesting um, if you have a yeah a lot of game objects or a lot of text which are, needs to be fine so you can use the tag system for some easier uh, doing. However, let's get started and fix that um, fix a text thing. Okay, so if I go back to my initial or from to my first scene, I need to. Um, call a new function which is called on level was loaded. This because when I use don't destroy on load, then I cannot use a wake or start anymore. So I need to take or uh, yeah to use on level was loaded, which is um, which oops, which can basically also use as an enumerator um, or coroutine basically. Um, so you can also pause some stuff or use void, um, you return, wait for seconds and so on. You can do all the uh, coroutine stuff inside on the level was loaded. So if you need to just do it. And I need to find, or actually I need a new game object, which I'm going to make just private. Um, it's not a um, game object, but it's another text. Um, yeah, text field, and I just give it a name called CT for coin text. And once the level is going to be loaded, then I want to make sure that CT equals game object dot find. Uh, again, if you have multiple game objects, you do you better use the tag system. Game object dot find, and now I need the string name of that, which is called coin text. And I want to get the component inside of that coin text, um, uh, yeah, in that coin text game object actually. And this is called uh, just a text one. Oh, I need the brackets over here inside too. Okay, so I want to find the game object coin text. And if I find the game object which has this name, so if ct is not equals null. So there is something in the scene, then go over and um, yeah, take this game object and place it into my coin text text. So um, coin text equals city. So I use that text object and place this on my coin text text variable actually. 
So, and also I want to make sure that coin text dot text um, equals coins dot to string. So I want to make this visible inside of the game, of course. And yeah, let's save this one and check this out. Um, so clear this null reference window again. Okay. So again, um, this is counting up in just a second. There we go. Um, we have seven. I go to scene two, or actually scene one. Um, I check my money script or money holder. Yeah, my money script. And in here we have the seven coins. I set the bool again. As you can see, the coin text is not available. And also the on level was loaded will give you here no reference because there is no reference. So it doesn't really matter if that thing is there or not. Um, for now, I want to ignore that error message because yeah, it wouldn't make hopefully uh, hopefully it wouldn't mm, take you into trouble because there is nothing so you can't find anything um, but the money script is doing all that alone and now I go back with the seven coins or oh, actually t let me just choose this seven thousand just the bull is um, on right now and I go back to scene one and as you can see this data is persistent and also the text was uh, he found the text and took this one and now he can write the values inside of that one again. As you may have noticed, I start my scene. This is another fix. I, the, the, that what I was, um, yeah, talking before or about before. As you can see, I start with a white ground over here and also this are yeah, greatly lit up. This is a small Unity bug, I would say, and there are several bugs. Um, some some people just reported this bug. I am not sure if this is fixed already, since I only have Unity 5.01, and there is also a 5.02 out right now, but I didn't update it. So maybe this one is fixed already. Okay, what I want to go over is, if I go from this scene to the next scene, you can see it's like that, yeah, brownish. And I go back, it is also brownish. This happened, also my coins are not its initial color. And this is because the uh, lighting system between um, global illumination and lightning baking, I would say. Um, I don't know why this is going to happen, but I'm showing you the next, uh, which is a fix for that. At first go into window, then into the lightning tab, uh, lightning, then into the light maps tab. And over here you have continuous baking as an option. Now, uh, when all your scene stuff is done, actually disable the continuous baking and build the scene once. Uh, actually build a light map and in here light map snapshot will be um, over there and also in your scenes folder there will be a spawning script folder or spawning stuff folder which is a scene name and in there there will be a light map um, asset and a skybox preset or whatever probe a sky probe um, this contains all the data um, of your current scene and this is currently the only fix I know. So you need to do this with all your scenes. So you can close this lighting window actually. And let's check if this have fixed the problem. So we start again with a greatish lighted scene. Now we go and load the scene. There is no lighting fix in here. And now let's go back. And there we go. All light is in here back and in it's yeah however it has to be okay so with all of that stuff done we uh, another or a small conclusion now you know how to save bowling um how um you have persistent data between scenes you um know how to fix actually uh, ui elements of the can new canvas system um when you switch between scenes that you get back all your stuff because the start function or start method is not called um, after you uh, after application application dot load is called. So you need to take war, uh, on level was loaded instead of the start method, and that's it.
Now again I can um, save this one, whatever is, it has been. I go back to the scene. Um, I have all the persistent data in here. I can change the persistent data to whatever. I can go back. I have all that stuff in here again. And now I can just go over and load. And I'm going to be back to my loaded stuff, whatever I have saved this one before. So with all of that stuff done, I hope it was in any way helpful and useful. The null reference, I'm not sure if you need to basically need to go around of that or get away from that. I'm not pretty sure, but um, for now I don't, I, I, yeah, I don't think it's really needed to get rid of that null reference exception because yeah, in the other scene there is no, um, there is nothing to load. There is no text element for that. So it doesn't really matter. You can also, yeah, use a plain text, I think, to get rid of all the null reference stuff in there. Okay, I hope again it was helpful. I hope you liked and enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. And if you like that video, just, yeah, don't forget to sum it up. Um, if you have any questions about, yeah, data persistence or everything, um, just write me a comment below under the video um, or a private message if you like to. Um, and yeah, if you um, haven't already added my channel or uh, actually didn't subscribe to my channel, yeah, then feel free to do that one. And yeah, if you like all my videos and stuff and you want to um, donate something, then you can go to my um, channel page and use PayPal to yeah, donate some money if you like to. So, see you in the next one. Bye-bye.